you're in the hallway and you can hear this, come on in. Get yourself a seat. Anybody that wants a seat, come in. Welcome to the sold out 8-Bit Eric panel. Woo! Houston's usually kind of a weird convention anyway. I personally think Rich Pussy Houston sucks. I'm just saying. It's small, I'm always, it's always like, man, eh, should just stay home. But I have a streak. I've been going to all of them since the first one, so keep gotta it going. keep that streak intact. Keep it going, pretty much. So, how's everybody doing? Great. Good? Very good. good. Nice, nice. Thank you for coming. I'm sure people will be filing in. After me is Keith Coogan, so uh, it, it is etiquette to kind of get up and at least walk in and walk out that way. It's like pulling the live stream. Yeah, you don't want to stay, stay in your seat and make people We're here for the around. wrestling. Oh, yeah, yeah. Dude. None of that today, but. Wrestling news. But. <sighs> So, yeah, uh, thanks guys for coming. Uh, who's been to Houston before? I think all y'all have, right? Is this y'all's first time? No, we have some day one. Oh, yeah, nice. Um, you know, I'm a little bit different. Seems like there's more vendors this year, so that's good. Somebody walking around with a big ass camera and the thing that says, Did you this year at the hotel? No. Last year, you did it. Oh, no. Talking about that Twitch camera? Yeah. Yeah, I just saw it just now. No, is he legit Twitch or what the hell is he doing? He's Twitch on it. Well, yeah, but you would think Twitch would be using a smaller camera like like a GoPro or something, right? I don't know. Or this. You know more about that? Like, like... Yeah, I, don't Twitch is, I think he's cosplaying. I'm just saying. He's cosplaying. Cosplaying as a Twitch streamer? Uh, no, like a Twitch news... Because that looks like a big news camera, so I don't know. It does. It's so. too high tech to be Hey, it's going to be crowded in here when the movie plays. Is there enough seats? There might be. It was be. a packed house in, in California when we did a screening. Oh, was it? Yeah, That's it was awesome. a packed house. That's awesome. I just carry my chair around with me all day. Just carry your chair around with <laughs> me? Yeah. Yeah, it's going to be a packed house later. How's it going with the movie? Who's seen the movie? It's a couple. Times? A couple of them. Yeah. Hey, what's it on Blu-ray yet? What, what's it taking so long? Uh, I mean, the backers have to get it first, so that's going to be... The people who back the movie first are going to get the, their Blu-rays okay. first before anybody else can. So, they're not ready yet. There's extras, documentaries. There's a documentary that we're putting on the Blu-ray, so... That's a Billy question, but yeah, he's still working on stuff for it. So, I would say maybe like within the next six months, the Blu-rays will be out. So, audio, audio commentary as well, possibly. Yeah, we're going to do audio commentaries and stuff like that. Uh, a little bit behind the scenes vlogs. I know yesterday I recorded interview footage. Uh, we recorded interview footage for the, uh, for the documentary, so just talking about our experiences and stuff on there. We'll talk more today, uh, 5.30, when the panel is for that. We'll have a Q&A after that. That way we can answer... Uh, questions about the movie and stuff. I don't want to spoil too much right now for people who haven't seen it. It was good. That's all you need to know. Huh? It was good. Appreciate that. Thank yep. you. You did a good job as well. Yeah. So anybody buy any cool things yet? In the oh, yeah. Con? oh yeah. I think he spent too much already. How much did you spend? <laughs> um, let's see. I think I'm down to under a thousand. I came with like two grand. Holy shit. Jesus. <laughs> On what? Um, uh, video games. <laughs> <laughs> What's the most expensive game you bought today? 500? I don't know, something from Chief. I've got to have to guess. Oh, okay. It was probably the uh, EverDrive. Maybe. From oh, Chief and I then Pikachu VHS player. Yeah. Stuff like that. Nice. Bundling a bunch together. And I saw you hold a bag over here. Uh, super yeah, there's a guy, hey, the guy with the big beard. He's like a red, he has like a red beard. The vendor? No, uh, no. Okay, so there's a guy that literally has like a big red beard and he has like long hair. He usually has a lot of Super Famicom games and we'll do like four for like 25, oh, wow. four for 20. 
and every year I'd go and pick through, and I got like Donkey Kong Country, uh, mm -hmm. Mario All Stars, Mario World. Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I usually get like filler, even if I already have it. Like I got like Star Fox and C, like all the Japanese versions of the American games. So pretty interesting to see. Um, I don't know. It's to me, it's like a like a like an alternate universe. Like now we're seeing like multiverse stuff and stuff like that, like in movies. To me, it's like all those Japanese versions of the games are like multiverse versions of of what we got. So it's like a whole new. It's like a whole new thing to collect, so I kind of dig it. How's Battle Pass going? I already finished both Fortnite and Call of Duty with them. Call of Duty was pretty, was faster because it was double XP weekend. So and double XP again this weekend, by the way. But we're here. How's it going, guys? Welcome in. I like your cosplay, by the way. Is that a big fly? Uh, not of that gas. Okay, I was like, is he a fly or what is he? Well, I mean, I'll be the third person to think I'm an insect. There we go. You know about finding a uh, Isaac? Oh, finding, yeah, yeah, the game. Okay. Yeah. I want to play with characters. Okay. I like it. The helmet, the, the helmet looks like it's a pain in the ass to put on and off, so. Not really. Like, you're putting I, it on. This is actually my second version of it. Uh, uh, the first one, that was a pain to put on it. Then just kind of flopping everywhere. Uh, and on the inside, I put a hat on. So that makes me so much okay. easier. Every time I do a con, I'm like, I'm going to cosplay one of the days. Like, just, even if it's just at my table. Like, I kind of want to put something on or do some kind of like silly reference to something. But I never do it. A lot of you did like a pro wrestling cosplay at Yeah, yeah, yeah. We did a, in Philadelphia, we have... Uh, they did a cosplay from a wrestling show, which was just essentially like Smash Brothers in real life. And I, I got to be Wario for that. And uh, I wrestled Link yeah. the first <laughs> year. Then the next year I wrestled Mega Man. And then after that I teamed with Waluigi and Wario versus um, Mega Man. And uh, this rapper is named Mega Ran. He's a rapper. We wrestled against that. Uh, but it's pretty interesting when they, you see them do it. Now, now they kind of go towards uh, like Marvel and DC characters now. So like the last time they did one, they had like like different pair offs, like uh, like uh, basically like the equivalent of Marvel versus DC. Like they would have characters in common and stuff like that. But it was pretty cool to do the Smash Brothers stuff because you get to have fun with it and just be silly and stuff like that. And, then they did like a Mario Brothers, the Mario Brothers wrestled each other, and they used like Legos and stuff like that, like silly stuff. In so, a wrestling ring? Yeah, yeah, You just, instead of like thumbtacks, just throw Legos down and slam each other on. Um, so yeah, was, those times are pretty fun. Um, Retro Palooza, I'd like to see more of a cosplay thing. I feel like cosplay brings like another avenue of like, Calm life, yeah. yeah, like calm life. It really would, especially if it was expanded. Like you bring yeah, a lot because I've seen like bigger factions. places, like Magfest and stuff like yeah. that, where it's cosplay everywhere. Like, like I mean, it just always kind of feels like it's a third. Like, yeah, yeah. you come here for games, then panels, and then yeah, maybe. Yeah. And then I'm not into tabletop, but a lot of places right. do tabletop too. Right. I think he tried that before, like in the Arlington one, but not so much here. Yeah. So who's who's all from like? First time, I asked earlier, now there's more people. Who's first time coming to the Retro Palooza Houston? Yours for sure? Nice. Hey, there we go. Nice. Cool. The first time. Yeah, he, he runs Retro Palooza Houston and then Retro Palooza in Arlington. Um, it's good times. It's just like, now games are too expensive, man. Like the last year or two. That's terrifying. Up. I'll like look at my Switch games and I'll look up and I'm like, wait, this Switch game is like 100 bucks now? What the hell? Like Skyland, like the last Skylanders game, that one blew up because there's no more Skylanders. Nobody cared about it when it came out. Or you but look at the Wii U up. stuff now, like Wii U games. I bet you there's not even any decent priced Wii U games out there. Mm. I bet you every single one is like over 100 bucks. I would not be surprised. It's just, it's up there. Yeah. Close that Game and Wario game on Wii U is like expensive. And then Devil's Third is like 500 bucks now. 
Yeah, and, and I remember Devil's Dirt was hard to find when that came out. It was like, it's a terrible game. It's trash. And I just remember I managed to like hunt it down at a GameStop in San Antonio. And I was like, I'm coming to get it. It was like the only copy in the whole city. I was like, I'm coming to get it. And I rushed because I was like, I know that game's going to be. It was like one of the last Wii U games. And I was like, I'm going to go get that. And I'm just going to like hang on to it. I opened it, unfortunately. So it's still like 500 open, though. It's weird. So, yeah. Did you, did you yeah. raise your hand? What do you think the, the prices are rising? Do you think it's a bubble? Do you think? No, yeah, I think mostly it just raised because everybody was stuck at home during the pandemic, and people are bored, so then they want to like play these, you know, they'll, they'll, they're on YouTube, they end up discovering somebody, and they're like, oh, shoot, I used to play that game, or oh, I used to have that one, because if you think like a casual person, they got rid of their games a long time ago, they're not like us at gamer cons where we have our shit from when we were you know, our Super Nintendo from when we were a kid. So then they're like, oh, dang, I forgot about that. I'm going to play it. And then, you know, they, they get that, and then get that, and then it just, people, supply and demand. You know what I mean? Uh, it is kind of weird that Wii U blew up so much, though. Like, that blew up huge. I don't understand why. Like, nobody cared about the freaking thing when it was out. I think I've seen that kind of thing before with older games, like, um, I recently saw this, um, What Happened video. You've been uh -huh. heard that series with, uh, Street Fighter 3. Oh, yeah, yeah. At first, it was, the initial releases were kind of botched, and then finally it came out Third Strike. It was kind of alright, full finish, but then, as time went on, it became sort of treasure, so. Yeah, it's like, it gave, they become, like, cult, cult favorites and stuff, and... There's certain games where you just know, you're like, okay, that one's going to be this garbage right now, but you just know, hey, pick it up when you can, because, like, like for example, and I'm calling it now, and everybody gave this game crap, like, the last year, that Balan Wonderland, Balan Wonderworld, is made by the Sonic creator, and it's like a complete garbage game. Mm -hmm. I guarantee you, give it time, like, ten years from now, every, oh, you need to get it, it's like a $500, I guarantee you, that game is going to be one that everybody's like, oh, you know, you should have it. So when I also it, feel like that's the kind of thing that happens with the Star Wars sequels. Yeah. The pre, the, the, the episode one, two, and three. Right. Yes. Yeah. And now everybody loves Hayden Christensen all of a sudden. <laughs> but we all gave him crap for being Anakin in 2002 and 2003. <laughs> Which, uh, don't talk about the plot. But just raise your hand if y'all seen Obi-Wan yet. Yep. Nobody? I saw it. I saw it the night before. And then I haven't seen Stranger Things yet. I need to check that one out. So, so the new season relates? Yes, yeah, Stranger Things. If they're gonna this current season. They're kind of doing what they're doing with the Walking Dead season, where they're doing like Volume One, and then like you know oh. a couple more weeks, Volume Two, and then okay. they're gonna like go nuts, like in I think July with some more stuff, and then one more season, and then it's gonna be done. Sweet. So, yeah. Appreciate all you guys coming in. Unless y'all are here early for Keith Coogan's panel and y'all are like, I got my seat. <laughs> so I actually got to talk to him earlier. I, I, I'm bad with actors' names. Like, I, like, you know, like, I'd be like, oh, that one guy from this and that. And then once I realized who he was, I was like, oh, shoot, that's cool. It's the face, not the name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, yeah, we, we actually kind of hung out with him a little bit last night. And he was really talkative and answered, like, all the questions about movies and stuff. Like, you know, like that type of the, the Hollywood movie industry and stuff and he he has a pretty interesting story that he, you know like because his grandfather was like an actor too and like his it, he told us he goes yeah my um, my grandfather there's a there's a law that was actually passed in Hollywood for child labor it's called the Coogan law and that's where like child actors have to get a certain percentage like whatever he goes yeah that was named after my grandfather wow, like, wow that's, that's crazy that's kind of neat. Small things like that. Yeah. And then he was telling us like roles that he auditioned for that he didn't get. You hear like, I'm spoiling his panel, but it was, it was interesting. He's like, oh, he goes, yeah, it was just everything that would come out audition for. And, you know, he's competing against guys like both the Corys back in the day and stuff like that. How's it going? All good. We'll be here in a minute. All right. <laughs> I just saw something peeking their head and I'm like, hey, how's it going? <laughs> Yeah, 
so uh, feel free, anybody has any questions or anything like that, I kind of do a, yes sir? Any paranormal stuff this weekend so far? Nah, no paranormal stuff. Dang. Nah. No radios turning on? Nah. No shadow people really coming out of the building? Like, I've never been around with any of that stuff. Okay. Okay. Too, we got the Ghostbusters right over there. Yeah, we're okay <laughs> with that. We got a huge, man, how many, how deep are they? Like, 20? Like, I'm seeing the new one every corner. I'm like, damn, these big ass crew. There's a lot of them I've seen, yeah. Big ass crew of Ghostbusters out here, man. They forgot the car. The car. Oh, eh. Well, if y'all see our movie later, there's some Easter eggs and stuff. That one's better. They have both the Ecto 1 and the Ghostbuster vehicles next time. Yeah, so how many of y'all are going to see the Game Chasers movie later? Probably. Or how many of y'all have even seen it already? We're waiting. Okay, so wow, wow is a good chunk of y'all that haven't seen it. I'm excited. Man, this is crazy because right now it's like about half the room is full right now. It's going to be packed when they show it. They're going to have to bring in more chairs. Uh, it's going to be in here, I think. Yeah. They're going to have to bring in more chairs. <laughs> it's going to be on sure. the oh. And then we're having a Q&A afterwards. I want to talk about the movie, but again, I want to save it for the panel, so I'll save it for the panel. Yeah. Um, so my, my, usually I just do like a Q&A, and lay back, just talk and chat and stuff like that. Um, and I like to be the first panel because I'm like, Dude, I want to get it done and just go look for games and stuff. Um, my recent hobby, though, I, I'm not into the game collecting now. I'm into the Pokemon card, and I don't, yeah. I don't like Pokemon. I do not like Pokemon, but I like the cards. Like it's like, kind of weird. Oh, I've seen that kind of thing before. Yeah. Like, like there's just something to get in the cards, the and, and then you, you open it, and then it's like you collect it, and I'm like. I start following these Pokemon card collectors and like put them in the binders and just I have like the big huge like box like a cardboard box and I have it full and I'm just like man I'm like this is a lot of fucking money like I would venture to say it's almost more expensive than game collecting to an extent because like Actually, you go to the right GameStop and they have the fill the bag sale going on and you see the stock you're like. Two hundred dollars in Pokemon cards, great. And you're just like, okay, I hope I have a two hundred dollar card in here to make it worth it. And you don't get jack, and you're like, man, I should have just left that stuff sealed. That would have been worth more. Uh, it's, it's like when I, I don't know if you guys are the same. When I get into like a new hobby or a new collecting thing or whatever, I just go nuts at it. Mm -hmm. Like I, I, like when Amiibos came out. I bought every single goddamn Amiibo I didn't have. <laughs> like, I would go to Target and I'd be like, don't have that one, don't have that one, don't have And then I'd come home with like 10 that I don't have. Then I'd be like online trying to see which places have like the, the sales, like buy one, get one half, or some that. And I'm like, okay, blah, blah, blah. And then, and then you try to like strategize. You're like, okay, I already, have, I already have this one, but I can get a second one and use that for trade bait to get the one I want. And you start doing that. And with games, I did that. With... Amiibos, I did that with Skylanders, with like every little thing. I'm like, oh, and then now with Pokemon, I'm like that. So I get terrified. That's why I don't do toys anymore or comics or any of that because I know with comics, I would get in trouble. I know with toys, I would get in trouble. So I just kind of like one hobby at a time. And this Pokemon bug got me. Pokemon bug got me bad. That's me with Funko Pop. Yes. I luckily <laughs> went in and out of Funko's Weekly. Weekly. Because there's something pretty cool. I'm like, oh, this is cute. And then now you're getting like all these other companies that are making their own different versions of like, mm -hmm. and you're like, it's like weird. Like, Walmart has a Funko section now. Yeah. Like, you get, and, they, and, and they're strategic. Depending on the Walmart you go, you have the toy aisle, the toy section, right? Then you get like, they have like a collector section, like in the electronics, yeah, like yeah, separate. Yeah, yeah. And then sometimes you'll even find like a third area, like somewhere else, and you're like, fuck, they didn't know how to get you. Yeah, sometimes they got a cool section else too. Yeah. And then like the mall has like three different versions of the same store now. You get like yeah. Lunchbox, freaking uh, whatever the other one GameStop has. Oh, God. Uh, Think Geek. Think Geek. Yeah, man, baby, they yeah, there's Think Geek, there's Box Lunch, box lunch Culture Shock. There's, there's, there's like no difference in Spencer's or um, Hot, 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 Topic. Hot Topic, except that Spencer sells like sex shit. That's like the <laughs> only difference. Yeah, that, that's like the only difference is that Spencer sells like sexual stuff. 
Uh, but yeah, Funko Pops, man. For a while, I was just getting them. I got like, because there was like Loot Crate and all that back in the day, and they would always include one. And next thing you know, I have like 20. And I'm like, okay. And then, and then you start getting like other ones, and then you start running into them. And then now it's like every place has an exclusive. Like, I'm, you said Dollar Tree even has them? Yeah. I'm surprised it's not Dollar Tree exclusive freaking Funko yeah, Pops maybe. now. I know conventions, some conventions started having yeah. like, like SoCal Retro Game and Expo had a Funko Pop exclusive. And it was, I think it was a Dragon Ball like character too. Wow. I don't even know what it was, but it was one of those. Speaking of Dragon Ball, new movie coming out soon? Yeah. 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 Can't wait for that. <laughs> I was into the Dragon Ball stuff too. That, that, another thing, back in the day with the VHS tapes, I was always going and getting the $20 VHS tapes for Dragon Ball before DVDs came out. Buying them or renting them? Buying them. Oh. I would go to FYE or Suncoast, remember Suncoast? Just go and get them, dude. They were, tapes were expensive back in the day. Like 25 bucks. So I would, I would hustle. I would hustle for my freaking VHS tape money. And this was like, hey Jay, how's it going? This is like when uh, when Dragon Ball was finally not showing anything. Like like for a while, it was stuck in the Namek saga for like years. Oh, like yeah. it would always end up like like whatever. And then it was like a big deal when finally it's like after you know the Namek saga, and then they finally showed the Cell games, and then it's like this is finally what we haven't gotten to see for the last fucking decade. <laughs> We're finally seeing post Cell game saga. So. When those VHS tapes came out, I remember I was in high school, everybody's like, dude, we're going to the mall right after here. The, the, tapes, the tapes are coming out. We're going to watch it. Because the only way we would see it is if people bootlegged it like off of Napster or Kazaa back in the day. And it would be like Japanese and bad like footage and like stuff like that. So, who's Dragon Ball fans in here? Everybody's Demon Slayer now. I've seen, I don't watch anime too much. I watch Dragon Ball and that's like it. That's about as anime as I can get. I was like, no offense, but I'm not, I'm nerdy, but not that nerdy, you know? Recently, I've gotten, like, super obsessed <laughs> with Yu-Gi-Oh. Huh? You, recently, I've gotten, like, super obsessed with, like, Yu-Gi-Oh. Yu-Gi-Oh, yeah. Now, that's a bit older, too. That was my thing in middle school, and I just kind of, yeah, but that, then there was this huge power creep. Yeah. I was like, oh my god. I remember, I don't like, get back into this. I remember, like, Toonami came out, and it was, like, Inuyasha, and, like, all these older cartoons like Detective Conan and things like that and then there was like there was like uh, Voltron they started showing Voltron and then there was like G-Force and then I was like okay so a lot of these shows are just like anime Power Rangers it's like they get the red <laughs> blue yellow you know it's like five colors and then it's like it almost follows the same formula like a mysterious evil version of them shows up and then they all join together and I'm like wow so Super Sentai has essentially been the same thing for like decades like it's just crazy like the formula when you see just like i mean like sailor moon is the same thing as like voltron which is the same thing as like power rangers is the same thing as you know what i mean like it's yeah. all i don't know it's interesting very interesting so uh yeah anybody have any questions i could talk here all day i can do this all day like chris Evans says Anything new? Well, at least until the next panelist comes in. <laughs> yeah, which is Keith Coogan, by the way. Some people, I'm so like shocked when people tell me they've never seen Adventures in Babysitting. Who in here has never seen it? <laughs> what the? That's like half of y'all. Me neither. Never heard of it. I've never heard of it. I've never heard of it. <laughs> We're too young. That was like one of my movies that I watched like almost every day growing up. I had a playlist, and some of this was like, like how the how the fuck did I get away watching that as a kid? Toxic Avenger. I watched that like almost every day as a kid. Have y'all seen that? It's fucked up. There's boobs. There's somebody gets decapitated. Somebody gets fucking run over. Like it, it's it's like trash. Like it's almost like built. Like you're almost watching like like you like as I saw years later, didn't remember any of it. I'm like, wait a minute. Like I felt disgusted watching it. I was like, I was a kid watching this every day. But like I, I was watching like Toxic Avenger, um, uh, something like like 
violent ninja movies. I remember there's like a, I forget what it's called, but the girl gets possessed by a demon spirit of like a ninja. Yeah, it's ninja. Ninja three or something like that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Literally yeah. She kills a whole fuckload of people. Yeah. Um, that was weird. We're yeah. And then, and then like, Adventures yeah. in Babysitting with family in there every day, too. So it, it just it just drives me, like, like I'm like, how the hell do people not see Adventures in Babysitting? It's on Disney Plus, okay? So y'all can watch it. it. I recommend it. Great fucking movie. Anyway, Keith Coogan was in it. Uh, he was also in Don't Tell Mom the Babysitter is Dead. How many of y'all have seen that? <laughs> what you watch in the 90s? Coming to America is good. Fuck you. I ended up watching the Star Crash tournament three runs. I grew up overseas, I couldn't help it. Um, yeah, that, I mean, that's fair. I'm taking a photo. Man, the crowd looks fuller in person, but then when you put your camera on, it's like, fuck. <laughs> we can all huddle in the middle. Cut this. <laughs> It's like, it, it looks good, it looks good as shit in person. Like, I'm like, fuck, you know? Huh? No, I'm just saying hi. Oh, yeah. Um, oh, here we go. Everybody's here early for Kate Coogan's panel, right? You gotta be careful with the mention of Facebook, because there's a remake. Yeah, 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 yeah. Watch yeah, they did a remake. They made a new version of it. Don't watch that one. Watch the one from the 80s with Elizabeth Shue in it. The original girl in Back to the Future. No, wait, was she? No, she was the one that replaced the original one in Back to the Future. Yeah. Elizabeth Shue, she was the one in Part Two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. Yes. How was the premiere for the movie? The premiere was fucking amazing, guys. Um, especially when you wait. It was like, when you keep it, I hate keeping secrets. Like, I hate it. Like, it just so I'm like, oh man, I want people to see this. I want to tell people about this. You know, I want to, you know, blah, blah, blah. And then finally, like, when the premiere happened, it was just it was just so amazing to see. And tonight, it's even exciting that, you know, whoever's going to stick around at 5.30 to watch it. Mm -hmm. It's just so exciting to see something that you, that you helped put together and um, something that, you know, it was like a bucket list item. So it felt like a, it felt like a wedding day, like the premiere in a way, you know, and, and get to dress up and stuff like that. At first, Billy didn't want to do a premiere like that. Like he didn't want to have like, he's like, oh, that's pretentious. You know, everybody wearing oh. suits and a little red carpet. And I was like, yeah, dude, but there was actual like legitimate actors in this movie that this was their first movie too. There's a lot of work. Put and, and I'm like, and I'm like, you know, in a small way, you don't want to take that away from them. And I was like, this is, this is their moment too. It's their first movie, especially like the child actors we had. You know what I mean? They yep. get a kick out of that. Yeah. You know? And it was kind of weird though, because when we filmed the movie, it was, most of it was in 2019. And then like, it got shown in 2022. So the kids that were like 10 <laughs> in 2019 were like taller than me now. And it's like, you're seeing the movie. Like it's that weird phase where kids could just age like five to 10 years, like, you know, in two years. It's like, holy cow. You know, like some of them I didn't recognize, and some of them went on to do good stuff. Like, one of them was on Nickelodeon. Um, they did the Are You Smarter Than a Fifth Grader with John Cena hosting it. Oh, oh wow. One of them was on that for like a full season. Wow. Because they had like a panel of like fifth graders. I was like, yeah, he's, I'm glad we got him in the movie before he gets famous. A <laughs> uh, couple other people. Uh, it, it was impressive. It was, it was scary being in there, but it was a lot of fun. Is yeah. yes. Any actual like scary things happen during the set? No, nothing scary. You're the second person in this panel asking about paranormal <laughs> stuff. Yay! There was nothing scary. Well, okay, hang on. All right. Uh -oh. Oh, wait, let's wait, go. Uh, I don't consider okay. So there's paranormal, and then there's like crypt cryptozoology stuff. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. I don't consider Bigfoot paranormal. Right. Anybody with me on that? Yeah. Yeah. So we're in the woods, and and I, you know, you hear animals sometimes. Raccoon. Like I went camping recently. I swear to God, it didn't sound like raccoons fighting. It sounded <laughs> like bobcats, right? So you hear you hear common noises. You hear coyotes, wolves, uh, whatever. And we heard. Like, we're, we were recording, like, if we started at 5 p.m., we were out there in the woods till 5 a.m. We did 12-hour days when we were shooting. 
And this is one of the overnight shoots. We're in the woods, like at a campground. And it literally, like, if I didn't know better, it was somebody yelling at us, like in the woods from like far. And I'm like, nah, dude, we're in the fucking woods. And that's not a person yelling. And me and Billy were like, dude, that's, like, we're like, and it didn't sound like a bobcat, it didn't sound like any, and then we were like, dude, that could, that could be a Sasquatch. Like, you know, like just the way that, not trying to be funny, but the way that it, the way that it sounded, like, fuck, yeah. just to even, like, just thinking about it, like, the way it was, like, like, it was almost like a whale. Like, 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 a, like somebody wailing, like, like, I was like, dude, that's either that or the Yorona, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> like, I'm like, it sounded like somebody, like, almost like a, like a, like a, like a cry, like a, like a, like a, like trying to communicate with somebody. We did the noise back, and that noise wasn't stopping. Like, we were like, like I, I can't even try to picture how to imitate it. Like, like, almost like a... Like, it didn't sound like a, like, sometimes when you hear, like, weird bird noises, like, you can tell they're trying to talk, but it sounded like a, like a, like a, like a, like a, almost like a Mexican grito, like, you know, somebody's just like, like a, like, no, 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 like a, like a, like a, like a, like a, like almost like a, like a, like a, like a, like that, but over and over and over and over, and the campground was closed, nobody was, like, actively camping, because this was, like, off-season. So, like, that's the only thing that I would say is paranormal and weird. Yes? Wait, based on what you're describing, it kind of gives off Skinwalker vibes. Basically, there's this, um... Yeah, yeah, Skinwalkers are scary. Because they basically try to lure you. That's the new meme, though, now. Like, yep. on TikTok, they're like, it'll show, like, a deer, and they're like, this is a Skinwalker in disguise. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. I mean, everything could be real, but yeah, that's that's it really. Like there wasn't any like scary ghost thing, especially because we're mostly outside. Who sees ghosts outside? Like <laughs> you really don't. I'm not seeing a graveyard. Huh? I don't, I don't, you don't see ghosts outside. You see weird creatures, creatures outside. And honestly, I'm more scared of creatures than I am a ghost. Like the dongo. Yes. <laughs> did, did he try to call your name or anything? Because it nah. could have been like some type of demon type thing. Nah, nah, it was, it was, it was a creature. It was, it was probably like, I would say it was probably about a mile away from us. Oh, gosh. Okay. Yeah. I wonder how fast it could run, though. You never know. Huh? Were you near water, though? Huh? Were you near any body of water? Nah. Did you have a question, or? Eric, Eric we're, we're seeing a lot more posters of, uh, of you uh, from your, your, your fighting scenes. So, uh, is there uh, anything major going on uh, as far as like maybe story plots uh, with your character, uh, your wrestling character? Oh, nah. Just kind of just chilling, taking in show at a time, just entertaining people and stuff like that. Nothing major right now. Just kind of keeping it. We do like local shows only and stuff like that. What do you think about AEW? Hey, I, 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 so they're all right. It's not my style. I like old school. You know what I mean? Question? Uh, I was just gonna ask where were y'all covered it? Like what state were y'all? Wichita Falls, Texas. Ooh, yeah. Oh yeah. So. Was that during production? Yeah. So we had to do a lot of outdoor scenes. So we we worked out a deal with a campground. It was like a campground. Um, it was November. Like literally, like a couple weeks before Thanksgiving, nobody out there. Just campgrounds are closed during that time, so that's why I think it was a creature. And, and there was no weird person yelling at us from, you know what I mean? It was in the middle of the night too. It was like 3 a.m. Oh, then it might have been a ghost. Mm -hmm. Yes. Some some actors get to keep some stuff from uh, their movies, and we're asking, uh, did you by any chance happen to keep them the underwear? I just kept my not did not. No spoilers, no spoilers. I just kept my shirt that I had on set, like my wardrobe. I got to keep that. That's about it. I didn't take any props. Our, our set designer guy, he kept a good chunk of the props he made because um, he says he can reuse them for other stuff that he makes. Um, I know Jay kept a couple of things, but there wasn't, there wasn't too much of stuff that we could 
we were on a shoestring budget, so there wasn't too much in way of like actual prop props beyond like the set. Um, and a lot of stuff belonged to people, like, you know, like we would just bring stuff, like we needed games. Billy would just bring stuff from his house and stuff like that. The wardrobe we made ourselves, so I kept mine. Which we have replicas of some of the shirts from the movie. That was my wardrobe. We have, Billy has them at his table. And if y'all haven't been, we're way in that corner over there, by the way. Don't be shy to say hi and stuff like that. So, we'll be chilling over there, me and Billy. Question on this side. This side's talking. If y'all guys are just <laughs> yes. Uh, Blu-ray for the game shows. Yeah. Uh, when the movie Blu-ray or the season Blu-ray? The movie Blu-ray. Okay. So movie Blu-ray. I'm not really involved with that, but I, I would say if you backed it, you'll be getting it first. If you didn't back it, you're gonna have to wait a little bit longer. Um, we're doing extras, like last night I did interview footage for the doctor behind the scenes that we're doing on it. So I would say maybe by August, September for the Blu-ray, for the backers, and then I don't know how they're going to go about selling Blu-ray copies. Because they want everybody that funded it to get dibs first. That's the only, the only fair thing. I would say that, but it's probably going to be longer. I don't, I don't know anything about it. If I if I had a wish like that, I would I would have you guys all have it right now. But he's putting a lot of work into it. Um, with that said, he's been working on it since we shot in 2019. Like he's made the menus and stuff like that. Now it's just getting you know the movie's done. It's edited, so that's on there. Now it's just getting like behind the scenes stuff put together and things like that, making it worth. He likes to put a lot of extras into the stuff. Things like that. Deleted scenes. There's deleted scenes that didn't make the cut that I still haven't seen. There are going to be extras on there. Uh, extended versions of scenes. There was a lot of stuff that got cut. Like when I was watching, it was so weird seeing yourself. Like you're up there and you're like, you're watching yourself, but you, you know what's going to happen. So I'm like, fuck, is this how like people in Marvel movies and Star Wars feel? Like, it, like they don't get to enjoy Avengers Endgame the same way we do. You know what I mean? I'm like, fuck, I don't ever want to do anything cool like that because then I won't be able to enjoy it. Yeah. Like, I'm sitting here watching me and I'm like, I'm like, okay, blah, 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 blah. But then it was interesting to see how it played out or how he changed it. But it was kind of like weird. Like, it didn't feel real. Like, it was kind of hard to explain. I was also drunk at the premiere, so that's kind of <laughs> But it, it didn't feel real. Like, it was just like so like, like, I don't want to say it felt unfinished. But it's like you're watching it and you're like, it just to me is like, you know, you're always gonna nitpick and things like that. But it was it was a very cool moment. Who went to the anybody that went to the premiere in here? Okay. One or two. One or two. It was cold as fuck that day. And that was when Omicron freaking randomly decided to fucking come up and yeah. it was like like yeah, of course. When we have our premiere, that's yeah. when COVID strikes again. Yeah, that's why. And and the person that he made the movie for was his uh, his grandmother. She didn't go to the premiere because of that, so it was kind of sad. He didn't get, to, she didn't get to come. So, the premiere was awesome though. And it, and then we showed it in SoCal, for the the Game and Expo there. I was more nervous there than the premiere. Bigger crowd, I would think. No, it was about a room like this. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, maybe just a little bit. Like, if that wall was pushed back, too. Oh, okay. Uh, I didn't get to go to the Philadelphia showing. It was at a game swap. And I'm excited about today. I don't, I don't care what Philadelphians think. <laughs> screw them. <laughs> and screw what Californians think, too. I want what my Texans fucking think. Let's go. Although I... Although... Although I will say, Houston's not one of my favorite places in Texas. <laughs> but y'all are better than Austin, so I'll give All it a right. And Corpus Christi's fucking boring, so that's not a good question. Laredo sucks. Laredo's like, the, Brownsville's complete garbage. There's certain places, like, you know. What about San Antonio? I love San Antonio. That's where I'm from. That's where I live. San Antonio and Houston are almost like the same, though. Like. I talked to Falco all the time, and he'd be like, it's raining, and so, you know, it's getting cold over here. I was like, 
Yep, it's like wet. I'm like, fuck, that means same exact fucking weather. You know? But you actually have like uneven surfaces in San Antonio. It's all flat here. I don't know, There's man. There's some hills there. No, I've only really. been there once though, but I just I remember seeing all I know semblance is of hills. That stretch of highway on ten between San Antonio and oh, Houston is coming trash. Yes. That was a that was trash. I'm like fuck this is thirty five two point oh. It's trash. The drivers and the big trucks drive like assholes on there. It's like two lanes, the whole fucking highway. It's like fuck man, we need like four more. It was boring when I drove through it. I freaking took Sealy a back road, like, this way, all the way around to, like, a toll road to get here, because it was, like, it added an hour of traffic if I would have stayed on the road. Yeah. I was like, fuck that. Speaking of San Antonio, have y'all ran out of Mexican pizzas here? Because I've been here a lot of places where out now. I have no clue, but I tried, that Mexican pizza I did the video on was the first Taco Bell Mexican pizza bag. Everybody's been hyping about the Mexican pizza forever. Oh, I'm so mad it's gone. It's, you know, it's my favorite, blah, blah. And then, you know, they're bringing it back. I'm like, okay, here's my chance. I tried it. Not that good. It's yeah. a fucking chalupa with two fucking, <laughs> with two fucking shells and it's soggy. It's a bunch of fucking, it's a fucking, it's a bunch of beans and it has enchilada sauce. And, and, and also, is it just me? But, like, I know Taco Bell's always been salty. Like, Taco Bell's always been salty. But it tastes, like, twice as salty now. Like, it's like, like, you're drinking, like, it feels like I literally ate salt. It's also like, always salty. And if you, look on the, if you look on their app when you order, everything has a fucking sodium warning. Sodium warning. Yeah. Sodium. It's like, fuck. I usually don't give a shit about salt or sodium. Like, I'll eat salt all fucking day, but when I'm eating Taco Bell and I feel fucking, like, Sick afterwards, I'm like, fuck. Like, I don't know. Talk about it used to be better in the fucking 90s. Yes. And in the 80s. Sucks now. Mexican pizza was not fantastic. It's the lettuce. It's the lettuce? Uh, I, I like the cheese. Talking, even though people are like, oh, it's made out of like saw. Like, did you see that rumor? It was like part like sawdust and wood or something like that. It's like, I don't give a fuck, it's delicious. <laughs> or, or like they try to scare you at McDonald's with the nuggets being that pink slime. Fuck it, I'll eat the fucking nuggets, I'll give a shit. Well, same. my experience, I, ever since I just somehow grew up after eating nuggets for a while, I just threw off McDonald's from there. Yeah, I, I do make nuggets all the time, man. Nuggets all day, every day. Except Burger King's nuggets, they put really? trash. Yeah. Yeah. I used to wait for Burger King myself, but then it just started giving me a bad aftertaste. Or yeah, Burger King gets me sick now too, it's weird. And, and every Burger King now employs assholes. Like yeah. you can never go to a Burger King and deal with anybody nice anymore. Works of aging. But at the same time, I don't like how Chick-fil-A and Whataburger are doing this crap where somebody's like waiting for you, like, Pull up there here with the little tablet. Yeah. And they're like, hi, what would you like? I'm like, well, can I see the fucking menu first, asshole? <laughs> like, like, you know? Like, I'm like, can I see the menu? Oh, yeah, sure. You can hear And it's like, you talk to like four people before you get your fucking food at Chick fil A. You get the first person, then you get the person that's like, do you like any condiments? Then you get the person, hey, do you need napkins? And then you get like the person that gives you your drink. It's like, fuck, man. You know what? You know, like, I'm not trying to be like a germaphobe or anything, but fuck. Like, what are the chances four people touching your shit that you can get fucking something from them? It's like, come on. Uh, yeah. What you playing right now, man? Oh, good call with Kato Files, man. I love it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, man, I hate that I fell addicted to this game, but I'm about Fortnite now, man. <laughs> <laughs> All the fucking time. And I spent money on that. They just dropped Obi-Wan on it. <laughs> like, I made sure to get on xCloud, because you can do xCloud now on your phone to play it. And uh, I made sure to get on there and get to the item shop and buy Obi-Wan before he wasn't in the store anymore. And I'm getting that. And I'm on, like, they have, like, the member the membership now. It's, like, a monthly subscription for, like, 12 bucks. I'm on that. I, I, I just... As soon as I got the PS5 and the Xbox, I was like, yeah, hey, you know what? It says optimized. Let's see what it's like. Started playing it, and then it was fun playing it on stream. 
and then like viewers would play with me, and I was like, okay, it's kind of a little rush, and then I played a little, I was doing a little bit better than I thought I would, and then I just got addicted to it, and then you get the battle pass, and it's like, that's all you're thinking about is, I want to get all this shit, and then, yeah, Fortnite, Call of Duty, I've got addicted to Call of Duty also, even though I suck. Um, if I'm not playing those, I still pop on a GTA online, and they did the fucking membership thing too, GTA Plus. So I'm like, oh man, I got a monthly subscription to GTA Plus, I got the Call of Duty, I got the Fortnite, and then um, I started playing that Multiverses also, because they have the closed mm -hmm. beta with yep. WB games, so it's like Shaggy and Batman and Superman and, you know, Game of Thrones characters. You can play, what's her name, Arya Stark, or what's her name, versus Shaggy, like in a fighting game. Right, the WB brawler. Yeah, 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 and it's not bad, honestly. Controlled pretty good, and you think of the potential that they could do with WB. I mean, they already have Looney Tunes on it, they have Harry Potter stuff, Game of Thrones, DC. They could throw Mortal Kombat in there if they wanted to eventually, WB. Um, I was just looking at all the properties that they own. I was like, fuck, they could throw Ma Matrix in there eventually. <coughs> they could throw, what, um, Jurassic Park WB? No, it's Universal. That's Universal, yeah. But, I mean, you think about it, and then I was like, oh, it's Smash, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, for so long you heard Shaggy should be in the meme of Shaggy being in Smash. Yeah. And I'm like, well, somebody's like, well, technically, somebody commented, they're like, yeah. Well, technically, Shaggy couldn't be in Smash because he wasn't a video game correct character. I was like, well, no, it's not the issue that he was a video game character. It's that he's a god, and there's no <laughs> gods in Smash. <laughs> but he turns, like, Super okay. Saiyan. Yep. He literally turns Super Saiyan. Like, that. they embrace the meme. Yep. Because in the meme, he, does, he goes Ultra Instinct and everything. And in the game, he fucking does it. You hold the button down, and he just goes, like, whoosh, and like that. And it goes bunny. gold and blue, and I'm like... <laughs> Like, holy crap, like yeah. that's awesome. Oh, they have all the Cartoon Network properties too. They can put Johnny Bravo, Powerpuff Girls, yeah. Cow and Chicken. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, they do all that. They can do anything. Yeah? What's up? Rick and Morty. Rick and Morty, yeah, they can do all that. <laughs> it's like, it's gonna be the Fortnite of, of fighting games. Oh. And, and what makes it good is that it's free to play. So that's gonna give Smash Brothers a fucking run for its fucking money. Just alone on that. Any game that goes free to play. Is this a, hey, you're almost done? No. Oh. <laughs> no, you got 10 minutes. Yeah. People are already here. Who's here for Keith Coogan already? They're like, hey, I'm chilling. Oh, nice. Okay. So we got a lot more people in here. Who's already spent a buttload of money? We got somebody that's already dropped a thousand. <laughs> How far are you? Uh, I bought a um, $300 Mountain Dew Xbox and had Boogie signed it. Ooh. Nice. Ooh. All right. So now it's worth about 50 <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I still need an OG Xbox. Somebody on? gave me one and then Jay, said Jay was supposed to deliver it to me this weekend. My fault. Yes. I tried and I played it like the first two weeks it came out and then I just get so goddamn distracted when the new season of Fortnite or Call of Duty comes out and then, you know, then this other game comes out like, uh, fuck, what was it? There was something else that came out, the fucking Evil Dead game that just came out. I was like, fuck, I gotta get on that. There's a, there's a season pass on that one, dude. That's how they get you. Games now, they're like, oh, we're gonna do a drip feed. And then what's the case of get good? No, I, I, I eventually once you pick up the little quirks of the game, it becomes like, it's like, oh, okay, I see where they're going, and you, you fucking, you have to like, out cheat the game. Like, you know, like, that game cheats. But you have to be like, okay, I'm gonna out cheat it, and then you fucking, then you see everybody's like, you go online and you research what everybody's character builds are, and Elon Musk is saying what his build is, it's like, fuck, this is an awesome game. Um, like, build a character? Oh, no build. I suck at that. That's one thing I will never ever get be able to do with Fortnite is be able to shoot and memorize all this crap. It's like like playing with a guitar. I can't my this doesn't operate with this at the same time. It's weird. Yes. What's your opinion about Dr. Sloan? Doctors. Oh, the character in the game? 
I think it's cool, like some of the backstory that they have and stuff. Yeah, I don't like her. I don't like her. But I like the Batman story. They did a Batman comic book crossover Fortnite, and it had a pretty good story that involved Dr. Sloan and all that, and it had a cliffhanger, and I think they're going to continue it. Yes? I don't know if you have an Oculus Quest, but... Uh, I do. Oh, have you played the uh, Resident Evil 4 VR version yet? I did play Resident Evil 4 VR on the Oculus, and it wasn't as scary as I thought it would be, but it's hard as fuck. Mm. To me, it was just more funny than scary. Yeah, it's kind of ridiculous, the way the enemies just kind of come at you, but I get motion sick crazy with VR. Like, bad, like to where I'm cold sweating, and they say it's because your brain is processing, like, like, because it's not real. And your brain thinks that you're poisoned or that you're hallucinating. So your body goes into fight or flight mode and that's why you start to, you have to earn your, your VR legs. Like if you go like on a boat, you have to earn your sea legs. So I'm still in the process of that, but man, it's so awesome. Like, like I got the big screen app and I started watching movies and stuff on there. I, I, I I saw a terrible, like, I'm looking at all these terrible, like, B-movies. Um, Night of the Comet, I saw that in a, in a theater by myself, and it was so awesome. And I'm trying to get all my friends that have it to come, because you can make a room and people can come. Nobody joins me. I'm like, come on, dude. I'm like, let's go. And then, then you go into the public rooms, and people are showing, like, Spider-Man No Way Home, and Doctor Strange and Sonic 2, and I'm like... I'm like, I'm going to fucking watch this movie for free. Fuck it. And then you're in there, and then it's like, it's cancerous, because you just hear everybody, like, I hate hearing kids' voices when I'm playing a game. <laughs> like, when you turn GTA on, you just hear kids, yeah, motherfucker, boom, 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 boom. It's like, God, turn off. So I play with no voice chat now. And every, I can imagine how Fortnite would sound. But I know more older people that play Fortnite than kids. It's GTA that has all the fucking kids. And all the kids' games have the adults. Like that. And, um, old people that saw Pokemon, fair to call duty intended audience, actual audience. Yeah, like, like ro I know more older people that play Roblox than kids. You know? I mean, the Roblox is actually a way to make money there, so. Yeah, yeah. I keep taking pictures of y'all because more people come in. It's Very good ones for the gram. So yeah, um, we just got a few more minutes. We can do some more questions. Yes. VR chat or like um, rec room and stuff like that and so, people, so many people are nice on there I remember like literally like I logged in and like I went to Horizon Worlds which is like the main hub for Oculus and they have like people that literally work in the metaverse as like information guides so I got in there and the lady that was just like the information guy was like so kind she's like hi blah 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 and she was able to tell that I was like a brand new user because I guess there's like, you can look into the profiles. She goes, oh, we got a first timer, blah, blah, blah. She goes, well, this is what you do if you do a thumbs up, and then you can do a thumbs down, and these emotes come up, and then you can do this. And she goes, oh, and you can teleport, and you should try this button. And she goes, now look at your look at your wrist. And she goes, it shows a little like hub, and she was so nice. I wish I sent a friend request or something. I was like, wow, they're so nice. And then everybody was helping me because I was playing like a paintball with them, and I was just trash. And everybody's like, they stopped the game both sides, and they're like teaching me how to play. I'm like, holy cow, this is this is awesome. Yeah. And you get to meet like random people from around. Like I was meeting people from like, I was playing like in the middle of the night, so I was meeting people that were oh, up like in the afternoon, like like in Asia and stuff like that, India, Asia, like playing with people from all over the world. And I'm kind of like paranoid too, like with the metaverse because of like Ready Player One and stuff like that, and Wally. -E. 
Like, I'm like, okay, this, everything's going to replace it. And now they're pushing, like, the virtual desktop. And yeah. now you can put your keyboard and your chair and everything in here, too. And I don't know, but it's fun. It's, it's, it's something else. It's just I get motion sick so bad. Yeah. Um, last year we had John Rambo and John McCain as DLCs. Are there any other characters that you like to see? On Call of Duty? Yeah. Snoop Dogg was weird. <laughs> oh, they no. put Snoop in Call of Duty. Oh. Um, I think that I would like to see more 80s, 80s action stars like Arnold in there as like, uh, you know, Ray, uh, Commando or his character from Predator or uh, even his, like a, the, his Terminator role would be yeah. cool. Uh, they just did the King Kong and Godzilla thing on there. That was interesting. Um, who knows? I mean, Far Cry had Stranger Things on it recently. Kind of weird timing. They could have just had it come out now with the new season. But, yeah, everything's going to have collabs now. It's, it's out there. I don't know. I think the next game I'm really waiting for right now, though, is uh, is God of War and Starfield. Those are the two ones. Yeah. Did you see the announcement for the new Kingdom Hearts? I did not, and I've never played Kingdom Hearts. I forgot what I said in my chat. You might have been you. I was like, man, could you imagine if Disney made like a like a multiverse like game? And I think it was Valkyrie. Because yeah, it's called Kingdom Hearts. <laughs> I was like, no, but I need like a fighting one. Like a Disney needs to make a fighter. Like I want Mowgli to be fighting like freaking Aladdin or something like that. <laughs> I think Mowgli would whoop. Aladdin's ass, to be honest. Did you see the I've not. I've heard mixed shit about it. I got spoiled. I fucking hate IGN. I don't know if y'all see they spoil like cameos and shit. Like, like nothing. I'm like, ah. I'm like, dude, I gotta worry about spoilers in a Chippendale thing? Yeah. I'm a social media like addict. I'm on that thing all the time. So, yeah. So I thought like people played Fortnite specifically just to shit talk kids. <laughs> I didn't know it was actually a good game. Oh, I like it. I love it. It's awesome. It's I I I, I don't know. I I feel weird when I shit talk kids. Like it's it's like I don't know. I feel I also feel like they would even though they would like bear me more. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, I don't know. So. I, because yeah, I played it, and man, it just seemed like slow and optimized and just like, just unfun. I don't know. I am addicted. You play the right mode or you play like the right thing and you do the challenges and stuff and it's 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 addictive. Uh, right. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Have you ever played like anything Minecraft related? I do like Minecraft. <gasps> I just don't play it enough. Yeah. I'm addicted to anything that is building or survival or resource like crafting. Anything. Doesn't matter if it's Minecraft, doesn't matter if it's Stardew, doesn't matter if it's uh, Terraria, doesn't matter if it's like any of that stuff. Like anything that has any kind of like settlement building or anything like that. Fallout 4, that's all I did. Yeah. We played Rust? I've not, I've heard about it. I've heard about it. Actually, it's always almost mentioned to me like all the time. I think the uh, panel's about to be over, right? Yes, uh, Keith Coogan's on his way in. Okay, so Keith Coogan's on his way in. If y'all are intending to be in that panel, I don't know how long his line is. Y'all can, I guess, stay seated. I don't know. But I appreciate you guys. Me and Billy are in the back corner. Come by, take a photo, whatever. Tell stories of me, ask me questions, anything like that. I appreciate you guys being here. Bye, sir. Thank you so much. Yeah, bye, sir. Thank you. Appreciate it. And if you do say for the Kugan panel, say you saw Adventures and Babysit it. Don't, don't admit that you haven't seen it. <laughs> and go see it. It's a good fucking movie. It's good. Oh, I'm going to put this guy actually on the TV side now.